Good evening, everyone, and I sure would like to welcome you this evening to the Healthy Start Parents Overview, a presentation that is entirely likely to change your life. This is going to be the next hour or so of an informative, maybe even um, just mind-blowing experience because there's so much that happens in the world that, well, we don't know what we don't know. And in this case, it may be very important to you because it, uh, it impacts your children's health and, and not just initially, but forever, for the remainder of their life. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, how I got involved with this. My name is Kathy Turner. I work in communications for Healthy Start. And a friend of mine happened to mention, who has a number of dental offices, that there's something that uh, helps straighten teeth without braces. I have a grandson who has pretty major problem. So when he said it, he had no idea how much of an impact it would have on me and how I was absolutely bent on finding out more. When I told my daughter about it, she wasn't that excited and especially when she asked her dentist who didn't know anything about it or her orthodontist. I sent her a video and that video had information much like what you're going to have this evening in front of you and it blew her mind. And she called me and she said, oh mom, you've got to get this on Facebook. So we're on Facebook right now. We're live and we are broadcasting there and we are going to be recording this for the people who missed it. You are going to be able to share this with other moms, dads, parents, and well, maybe your own doctor. So this is going to be the kind of evening where you might want to pour yourself a cup of tea, take out a pen and paper and jot down some questions. You'll also see that there's an opportunity to ask questions and we would love for you to do that. It's in a totally private mode. We'll be able to respond to those generically at the end of our webinar or we'll be able to respond to you in a very private manner by email. So first, let me tell you a little bit about this company. There is nothing that compares to it. After two years of documenting lectures and being a part of this with my own grandchildren and watching events happen across the country, and in fact, even internationally, they're in 37 countries. I only went to one other one, went to Ecuador, and it was so phenomenal to be there. We had the Ministry of Health, we had the private and the public dental school, and also the Orthodontic Society. So I have watched the impression of doctors from the full range of experience to see exactly how this information hits them. It's so exciting. It all comes from one man. I call him the world changer. That's Dr. Earl Bergerson. He's DDS, MSD, ABO, basically board certified orthodontist. But take a look at this career. He started 50 years ago. Orthotain was founded in 1967. He is the inventor of the Healthy Start treatment system. He taught at Northwestern Dental School, which is no longer there, but he was there for 25 years. He has treated over three and a half million children around the world. He has his treatment available in 37 countries. And I'll tell you, we go to programs and to conferences and shows all over the US and people come in from different countries wanting to bring it back, wanting that distribution, wanting their children to have this treatment. He has at this point 514 US and international patents. He has delivered this information and continues to and will the first weekend in August, but he's done it over 500 times at seminars. The first weekend in August, that's where he's going to be celebrated for the 50 years contribution to children's health. That's why I keep saying he's a world changer. He's been published 80 times. He holds 80 monographs. The, the appliance that you're going to learn about tonight has an FDA approval, approval, Health Canada certified. That's the equivalent of a class two medical device. There are no BPAs. There's no silicone, no latex. Even the application of this appliance and the cases that it comes in are antimicrobial. You'll see that it's ISO certified and American made. So now let's talk about our guy tonight. The, you've got the best guy to hear this story from. He is so, can you tell, maybe a little animated? He brings color uh, to the words that he uses. He helps paint a picture, but we've also, of course, got pictures to share with you. This is Dr. Ralph Dolphy and he practices in Cary, North Carolina. He's a graduate of the University of Pittsburgh School of Dental Medicine. That happened in 79. He's been at it for a while. I like the way he started. He teamed up with a local psychologist and they collaborated in working with handicapped patients. He did it for a long time. But I like knowing kind of the philosophy a person has by the steps they've taken, the path they've been on. And you can kind of get an idea that he's good with children, he's good with people, 
and your kids, well, couldn't be any more special than that. So you've got the right guy to listen to. Solo practice for 16 years, of course, adjunct professor at the School of Dentistry in Chapel Hill. He's been uh, accredited and certified in all kinds of different uh, treatment and a lot of cosmetics, but what he's really great at is sharing the story. And when he found this story, he said, no better in my entire career have I had than the story I get to tell with Healthy Start, which is why I'm telling you, it's great to have him with us tonight. So he's been married to Karen, his beautiful wife for 37 years. They have three great children and they live there in Cary, North Carolina, and he practices today. So I would like to turn it over to Rock, Dr. Ralph Dolphy. If you will share your screen, we will rock and roll and tell the story of Healthy Start for parents in this overview. There you go. Thank you, Kathy. It's so wonderful to work with you this evening and always so wonderful to be with you. Welcome to everyone, wherever you may be throughout the country and the world, listening to this evening to some really, really unique and in some ways startling information about a solution we have to what I would call America's silent crisis. There is a crisis out there right now that affects nine out of every 10 kids in our country. And it has to do with not quite having the right amount of sleep and the quality of sleep. Now I think, you know, right now in our country, you are hearing buzzwords like sleep apnea and things like that with adult patients, but you're not really hearing a whole lot about sleep children but if you if you take just a moment and think about what effect sleep might have on you you go to bed late maybe too late maybe you're restless don't have a good night only get a few hours in you get up the next morning you're groggy you're not really sure where you are sometimes maybe you know you want to go, don't want to go to work that day whatever the case may be just that one night can have that kind of an effect now take that take that little anecdote and think to yourself, I'm four years old, I'm six years old, I'm eight years old, whatever you want, to, what age you want to use. And if you deprive the child of the proper type of sleep and the proper amount of sleep, things are going to go in a bad direction. You'll see on the screen in front of us some of the things that can affect these children, some of the symptoms that they suffer with. I don't need to read from the screen, but I'll point out a few of them. You've got depression. You've got bedwetting. Oh my gosh, ADD and ADHD. What an overblown diagnosis that is in our country. And, and, and interestingly enough, some of it may be related to sleep. Mouth breathing, snoring, drowsiness during the day. They see your kids say, oh, Jimmy has allergies. Well, I, I always say, well, wait a minute. Does he have allergies all year round? Hmm makes you think a little bit because there may be something else to this and that something else in fact is something that Dr. Bergerson discovered with his amazing program that we have children who are not sleeping properly and these children are affected in such a negative manner that we in our dental in the dental profession particularly in the general dental dental community are reaching out trying to help people as much as we can we just feel like it's essential to try to get that, you know, going forward in a better direction. Um, all these children and what, what happens to them, it needs to have attention to it and we need to move forward. So in our corner, in our repertoire, in our vast knowledge of information is Dr. Bergerson and all of his colleagues who've studied over the past 20 years that this whole issue, this giant crisis is linked to sleep disordered breathing. Now we're not, we're not at this point really willing and, and should in fact go out and call it sleep apnea because we don't really have the instruments and the devices to measure adequately and correctly if there are is true apnea is occurring. So instead we're, we're giving it a bit of a, a general diagnosis by saying sleep disordered breathing. What does that mean? That means something's not going correctly. When a child is sleeping, something's not going correctly. If you are a parent and your child is suffering from, let me back, any of these symptoms, any of them, I'm gonna bet you everything in the world that it is related to their inability to get the proper amount of sleep in. It needs attention, okay? I, I, I'm, I'm really, you maybe already can tell in, in five minutes already, I'm really passionate about this subject. 
because this subject is at the core of what I believe in life. My mission in life, and this is true, I believe this in my heart, is to help as many people as I possibly can. That's, that's why I think I'm doing what I'm doing. Now, in the dental community, there's a lot of things we can do on a day-to-day -day basis. This particular set of treatment regimens is the most exciting thing I've come up against in my career of nearly 38 years. So let's go, go ahead. So let's just say you have a child with one of these symptoms. You take them to the pediatrician. And unfortunately, many of our pediatricians are not completely on board or understanding the whole issue of sleep disordered breathing. So in fact, what do they then do? I'll put my mouse on them. Psychotropic drugs come into play, psychiatric testing, counseling, maybe even surgery. We run through all these different studies, tutoring. Children begin to be identified as needing special education. Uh, it, it starts to just unfold and almost domino in front of you. And as a parent, it, it's, it's not number one, it's startling. Number two, it starts to almost get terrifying. Like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. I have a really wonderful child. What, do you, what are we talking about here? We're talking about trying to help your child who might have some sleep issues. Because these things on the screen really, really aren't that much of a help. They're basically a Band-Aid. They're what I call trying to treat the symptoms without really understanding the cause. Now, I'm not sitting here blaming anybody, okay? I'm a kind of a person is what's, what's water over the dam is water over the dam. If you're in my office, let's talk about what's going on now. Let's help you today. Okay. Because I'm not going to worry about what was yesterday. I'm going to worry about, I have a child here who needs some help. Let's do something. But the issues that are, or the treatments that are often brought up by our folks in the pediatric world are treating, as it says here, symptoms only and not the cause. They're short term. All right. Sometimes Physicians are prone to get out their prescription pad and begin to dole out prescriptions that they think may be helpful. But in many times, these prescriptions are not only costly, they can cause tremendous side effects. And guess what? They don't get to the root of the problem. Can you tell I get a little worked up about this? <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. It, it's just one of those things where I feel like, come on now, if we have a solution, if we have a, a pathway to, to, to solve a problem, let's Walk down the pathway together, okay? The healthcare system can't do it. We in the dental profession and we as a Healthy Start community, all the amazing people like Kathy, you've already heard this evening, and Dr. B and, 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 um, and Leslie and all, I could go on and on and name all the folks that we have in the program. That wouldn't make sense. But what we're trying to do is come up with a solution, a dental solution to a medical problem. How can dentistry help? We're the people. We're the ones. Okay, what's going on when people are, aren't breathing and sleeping? A lot of it has to do with the oral cavity and the structures that are supported and surrounded by it. We have all the stuff. We have the knowledge. We have the understanding. We have the research. We have the tools. We have a dental solution to impact this medical problem and help it. Because if we can get, we can find a way through a series of patented a mouth guard type appliances that Dr. B invented, if we can find a way to increase the airway and allow more oxygen to come into the child's system, we will in fact be on the road to solving the problem. Now the dental community at large, you know, for many, many years, I mean, let's face it, I've been doing this 38 years. So way back in the day, you know, I always tell people when I came into dentistry, we didn't even wear gloves. <laughs> okay. That's uh, you know, I mean, it was, we had electricity now, but nevertheless, we really didn't have computers and we didn't wear gloves then things were a lot different. And maybe then it was a lot about cavities, fillings, helping people with toothaches, things like that. All good. I still do those things. I still do those things every week in my office. But I like to think that at this point in time, the dental community, that we are no longer just about that. We are oral physicians. And as oral physicians, we are keyed into the overall comprehensive health of our patients. And those patients do include children who suffer with sleep disordered breathing. So it's now you could consider that treatment, what I call in our wheelhouse. That's our stuff. So that if you're seeking help, don't be hesitant. If you find a dentist in your community that has been certified in the Healthy Start program, they can help you. If you can't find one, go on our website, type in your zip code and try to find one. 
or better yet, when you go to your dentist and say, do you know anything about Healthy Start? If they don't, tell them, take the course. All right. Dr. Dolphy teaches a great course. Dr. Umbello teaches, Dr. Batoon, Dr. Um, Wilson. We have a wonderful uh, uh, group of instructors who do a beautiful job. Just request to your dentist, hey, how about checking this out for me? Okay. Now, so we're not about cavities anymore. We're all about taking care of everything for our patients. When I see this slide pop up, out there in the audience, I think to myself, I try to put myself out there with you and, and think, okay, I'm looking at this picture. I see two wonderful children, but they don't, they just don't look like they're as healthy as they could be. Without question, they look tired. This young man certainly looks tired. He looks like he could lay down and sleep for about three days. This young lady doesn't quite have the presentation that he does, but she certainly looks I don't, even, I don't want to go so far and say depressed, but she looks a little discouraged. Neither, in either case, I don't really think they look healthy. And there's a reason for that. And we can help. Okay. Let's go to the next two pictures. We look at these two young ladies and we say, are these children healthy? Now, if you don't, if, if I'm not expecting you folks in the audience to be looking at these kinds of pictures all the time to discern whether that you have a healthy child or not. I think when you look at these two kids, you can say, hmm, at the very least, these young kids are tired. These folks here, you can't really tell that that much, but what I'm going to delve into this evening is a little bit about the position of the lower jaw for this child and this one and others that I'm going to show you pictures of. Because what I like to do here to illustrate is I go the tip of the forehead, tip of the nose, tip of the chin. What I want to see is a gentle curve so that the tip of the chin might be out there where my mouse is, okay? Over here, tip, tip. I'd like to see that chin out here, not back there. Now I'm gonna show you some pictures in a little while, uh, x-ray pictures that I think will give you a more definitive look at what I'm trying to, uh, uh, what I'm trying to explain or get to. And, and the, the issue is, where is the position of the jaw? Where is the tongue? Where is their breathing apparatus? And how that might, emphasize or, or, or affect their ability to get maximum air. Okay, let's go a little forward. All right, what might be the causes of this, you know, nine out of 10 kid epidemic that we have? First thing I always say to my parents when they come in, I say, okay, three things, I just want you to do, th first I want you to do one thing. I, I want you to, when your wonderful child goes to bed at night, get them to sleep, all good, everything's great, give them a big kiss and a hug, read a book, whatever you need to do, close the door, walk out. 15 to 30 minutes later, carefully open the door, walk back in, and then just sit quietly in a chair. Just sit quietly. And what I want you to do is observe. And I'm looking for what I call the big three, okay? Are they grinding their teeth? Are they breathing through their mouth? Or are they snoring? Those are not appropriate things for kids to do when they sleep. Some people think, oh, snoring, it's like grandpa, you know? Or, no, 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 no. Everybody has a beautiful, wonderful nose on their face, and everybody, when they sleep, should be breathing through that nose. If kids are grinding their teeth, breathing through their mouth, or snoring, this is a, this is a tantamount reason, or this is a big, giant, blinking light saying, I need help. So those are things I want you to do. If you've never done that before in terms of observing your child, please take the opportunity to do that, if it's this evening or tomorrow evening or sometime soon, and look for those things to happen. Now, when you breathe through your mouth, it makes your lower jaw slump backwards. So can you imagine this young lady? She's laying down with her head on the pillow. She's laying on her back. When she lays down, just by gravity, her lower jaw goes back even further. By that happening, I'll show you in a moment, it's going to actually impede or close off some of her airway. Different habits like thumb sucking and finger sucking. If you just for a second think about if you pop your thumb in your mouth and you squeeze your lips around it and begin to do that, the thumb pushes up into the roof of your mouth. Now imagine you're two or three years old. When that occurs, you actually model, M-O-D-E-L, the bone such that it arches much higher than it's supposed to. As it arches up higher, it causes the, the, the teeth and the arches to constrict together. I hope that's making sense. Thumb in mouth. Suction occurs, roof of the mouth gets elevated over time, teeth kind of squinch into position, 
squinch. I think that's a dental word. <laughs> Sorry. They kind of constrict in a position. And as that happens, it begins to decrease the ability to breathe properly. All right. Nasal breathing is more difficult if the palate is high arched and the, and the teeth around it are constricted. All these things together can cause a reduced airway, reduced function, lack of oxygen, and the whole domino effect starts. You'll see this bullet point here where it also reduces REM sleep. Now we know a little bit about REM sleep. I think everybody's pretty much heard of the term, but in, to, simply put in terms of children, it's the most reparative and developmental portion of sleep cycling that could ever occur. So that it's imperative, it's absolutely crucial that the kids go through their normal cycles of sleep and the REM portion of that sleep cycle is completed so that they can grow, develop, and the parts of their brain that are supposed to all work together with all your other systems develop and marry into a beautiful situation. So all these things together can cause tough stuff, you know, can cause some bad things, uh, behavior problems, social problems, body and health symptoms, functions that aren't going right, eye-hand coordination, spelling skills, math skills, growth, everything, development, all the whole deal. All right, now how should a face grow? How should a head grow? This term, craniofacial growth. Cranio is your head, facial is your face, okay? So here's a picture of a head. If you can carefully trace, it's hard because the, the diagrams, you know, on purpose is sort of jumbled together to show you how growth would occur from here to here to here to here to here to here to here. So up to age 17. At about two years of age, you've got about 55% of it's developed. At four years, about 75. At 12 years, about 90%. So a lot of things can happen. What we'd like to see happen, though, is this lower jaw grow down and forward. Down and forward. If it goes down and forward, proper jaw position occurs. There's adequate room for the teeth to move themselves into their proper positions. And I, and I kind of say to people, it sort of opens the box. The moth gets a little bit wider, allows for proper tongue position, and everything starts to breathe like it's supposed to. That normal forward and downward growth is what should occur. Let's quick back up. Okay, right there. Now, I, th I would challenge all of you. This is not, I mean, she's a beautiful young lady. So is she. But the growth of the lower jaw is not as good as it should be. Okay, it should be down and forward. Now, I'm not talking about creating a jaw like Jay Leno. All right. I'm just talking about normal growth and development. Once that we want this jaw to grow down and forward. Same here down and forward. See how li her lip is curled like that. She's stressing to try to keep her lips together because her jaw is too far back. If it was positioned out here, she would have no problem with her function. So then we have to ask ourselves, okay, I mean, those two kids that we just looked at, I, I see those kids in my practice all the time. I see that facial development where I go tip of the forehead, tip of the nose, tip of the chin, and the chin is retruded. And we say, well, what's going on with that? How, how is it that that's happening? Well, there's a wonderful colleague in, our, in the dental community, uh, Dr. Robert Cotocini, and he decided to look at that really carefully and try to understand what is it about, or, or, or should I say, is there a relationship between how and what we eat to how the jaws and the face and the craniofacial development occurs? Turns out there is. And he kind of alludes to the fact in his research that because we've adopted such a softer processed food type diet, the jaws do not develop properly. There's not an ideal eruption or movement of the teeth. There's not an ideal width and length of jaw position. All these things together increase the chance for an underdeveloped both upper and lower jaw and this results in a word we use in dentistry called malocclusion. That just means things don't fit together correctly. All right, you can use this, you can use this word for a lot of stuff in terms of, of, of looking at a case and saying, well, there's a malocclusion there. That just means it doesn't fit right, okay? It doesn't fit right because the, the, the jaws are constricted. Instead of having a beautiful wide U curve pattern, the jaws are almost V-shaped and the teeth are kind of squeezed together. Maybe some of you as parents out there have looked at your kid's teeth and kind of thought to myself, wow, these, this doesn't kind of look right. It's sort, of, it's sort of squished together and almost like a V. That means that things aren't developing the way they're supposed to. Dr. Cotocini is indicating that it has so much to do with our diet. 
so much to do. I know I've talked to Dr. Bergerson about that uh, a bunch of times, and, and he, he's always said, you know, I'd like to see kids gnawing on raw carrots. You know, we're, we're so sort of worried about, you know, what, how they swallow, will they choke and things like that. But we've got to get a little bit of stuff in there that's, that's harder to chew to get the proper development of the jaw and, the, and in turn the position of the teeth. Now, the Western cultures, the nations that follow a similar diet to ours in the U.S., we have found that as those soft diets continue to increase in their availability, instead of, you know, young kids having a, a big snack on peanuts, they're just having some mushy bread and peanut butter or something like that. I'd rather they chew the peanuts, right? What we find in that research from Dr. Coraccini is that the first generation, about 50% of those kids have a malocclusion. Okay, that's not good. You continue doing that, now 70% of the second generation, now up to 85% of the third generation. What do we have? We have 85% of the kids I'm seeing that are three to six years old have a malocclusion. Their teeth don't fit right. I saw six kids today in my office and five out of six, their teeth and jaws were underdeveloped, their jaws were underdeveloped and their teeth were not in the correct positions. These population studies are true. They tell us what's going on. Now we can talk a little bit too about the use of pacifiers. And um, even unknowingly for me, uh, when, when our three children were born, uh, I was adamant about the pacifier not being used uh, beyond six months. And my wife and I, <laughs> I love her to death now, but we, we had a little, <laughs> we had a little go around, shall we say, because I felt like this can't, you know, even then though, that all those years ago, I really wasn't sure, but I, I could tell that that's not allowing things to develop properly. You can't keep a passing in, in a, a child of two. You can't have them using a pacifier. Think about the pacifier working just like the thumb does. It's, a, it's not good. Okay. The other thing we're doing is that we're seeing, you know, that of course we would love if ch all the children were nursed and, and, and could go through with breastfeeding and that, but sometimes moms, there's situation where, where they can't, and that's perfectly fine, but you still have to be careful about using prolonged uh, bottle feeding with, with a nipple over more than six to eight months. It's just not good for jaw development. And then our little thing down here at the bottom, they're now developing things, these things, these puffs that you put them in their mouth and they melt. That's a, you know, when the child is, you know, nine months, 10 months coming up on a year and there's some teeth popping in here and there, they don't need to do that. We need them to start looking at some harder foods. I'm not asking you to give your infant a raw carrot, please don't get me wrong. But when your child has the ability to chew things, they should chew. Okay. Now here's a situation of where we might look at and, and we say to ourselves, wow, these teeth look terrific. The thing that I love, absolutely love about this case Look at the spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and keep going. Almost every tooth has a little gap between them. Why, do, why, do, why am I so you know, thrilled about all that? Why would I think that's so great? Well, think about it just for a second. Let's take this tooth right here, all right? That tooth is probably about three and a half millimeters wide, okay? When the new tooth comes in, it's going to be about five and a half millimeters wide. Now, if imagine every one of these teeth being perfectly close together. That all looks great when you're four or five years old, but guess what? Trouble, big time trouble. When the new teeth try to come in, there will be no space at all. But the neat thing is with the Healthy Start comprehensive program that we have, we start the children out on a, on a sort of a phase one corrector type appliance. It's like a little mouth guard. Then we graduate them up into another mouth guard that will literally guide their teeth into the proper positions. That's not really the, 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 the crux of this evening's discussion, but it's still pertinent to point out that we can help not only with the correction of the habits that aid in the breakdown or the, the um, uh, solving the sleep disorder breathing problem, but we can also help guide these teeth in a proper position. That's a cool thing. Now, here's a little cross-sectional diagram. And I mentioned earlier, if, if you can think back for a second, rather than me backtracking in the slides, to the two young ladies, and, and I said, tip of the forehead, tip of the nose, tip of the chin. See how that curve is relatively soft. But there, in their case, the outside of their chin was clear back here. That was all pushed back. Now, think about it for a second. If you take this component, their lower jaw, and you push it back a millimeter or two or three, what happens to Mr. Tongue? Well, Mr. Tongue is attached to the floor of the mouth, which is attached to the jawbone. If this goes back, so does this. Uh-oh, here's the airway. 
Here's where you, here's your teeth. You breathe through your nose. It goes through all the stuff up here and filters it real good. Slide down the airway, boom, into the air, air tube and you're good to go. It should be nice and wide. If this is pushed back, I think we can all see this distance gets smaller. Okay. If it gets smaller, it makes it harder to breathe. That's when problems start. Some of the things of, when we look at our, our research and development for how a head should develop, uh, we have Dr. Christian Guillaume who suggests that arch expansion, meaning the width, I can come over here to the skull and we'll go from here to here and from here to here, that width, the, the bigger, the wider it is, it will improve the sleep disorder breathing condition in patients. If they have upper and lower jaw constriction, it will cause a problem. So if we can treat the cases that have jaw constriction with a valid treatment like Healthy Start, we can improve the width and that improves their breathing and the oxygen gets to them in a better fashion. All right, I told you I would talk to you or at least show you some pictures of x-ray pictures. Now remember, this is a what I would call a cross section, right? It's like it's a it's like it's cut down the side, and we're looking in at the inside. Now on the first slide, we see a, a pretty nice jaw position. We've got tip there, tip there, tip there. Looks pretty good. Tooth position, pretty good, and jaw position. Tongue right here, just the outline of it. And then there's the airway. Look how nice and big that is. That's like a big old garden hose. Okay, no problem breathing there. Uh-oh, let's go over here to a child who has tip of the chin, and look where the tip of the chin is, way back here. I'd love for it to be out here. Think about that for a second. If you take that lower jaw and move it forward here, what happens to this back here? Here's the airway on this child. This is just like the width of a coffee straw, right? Instead of being a garden hose, like that one. Here we have a coffee straw. That is called a restricted airway. If I see that condition in a child or even an adult, I at least start a conversation about how well is this person sleeping. Now, we'll, we'll compare these two pictures when we talk about the normal development of the lower jaw. If you, if you put your hand over the one on the left, the normal development, look at the one on the right and you say to yourself, is this chin in the right position? Let's compare the position of the chin to the nose here. Now we'll uncover the one on the left and now look, oh my gosh. That's just so simple to see. Look how nice that looks, it's down and forward. Think about the x-ray picture. Down and forward means a good garden hose to breathe through. Not constricted, right? And this is someone 10 years of age. Now, when we have improper air exchange, uh, excuse me, when you have a retreated lower jaw, when it's pulled back, if you have a child sleeping on their back or they're not developing properly, they end up trying to breathe through their mouth. So when their mouth opens, then you get a situation where as the mouth drops down over here as well, as it drops down, it all goes back about a millimeter or two. That then contributes to airway constriction. And if left untreated, here's the key point, in 82% of the time, it does not improve between ages two and 12. However, if you can make some impact with healthy start, you can see a massive improvement. Now, my next slide is a, is a picture, it's a little video of a guy, Eli, who's in his car seat, who's having some trouble breathing. I'm going to turn up my audio as far as I can with the hope that you will be able to hear this slide. Listen to this mother describe her baby's sleep disorder breathing. Very good. Now, watch what happens when she's able to open the airway by simply shifting the position of his jaw. Now watch what happens when I take his jaw and I just bring it forward. If I can, let's see if I can. Yeah, there's the airway. Just bring this airway forward. That is just so incredible, isn't it? I mean, it's really, really an amazing picture because what she did is she took him from a coffee straw in terms of his airway up to a garden hose. And you saw before, before at the beginning of it, he was, having str he was struggling. He was almost snoring in an attempt to try to suck some air in there as best he could. So she just simply reached in and moved the lower jaw down and forward and opened up 
a space. And suddenly, peace just kind of came over the little boy. And that's what should happen with children. Every night when they sleep, they should be sleeping peacefully. And the beautiful thing is, with the Healthy Start program, by utilizing the patented appliances that we have, the little mouth guards, we will help your child as, and, and promote jaw growth down and forward, open the box, get the teeth in better position, and have them breathe through that wonderful nose of theirs. That all will promote better health. And I go back to my original comment right at the top of the, of the program here this evening when I said, you know, the, where I, I began to just talk about not getting the right amount of sleep if you're three, four, five, six, seven, if you're a child and you're robbed of the proper sleep and the proper amount of air, doesn't it make sense that your development's going to be affected dramatically? Okay? Something to think about. So as we, as we talk about that development issue in the jaws and, and the, what we call the dental arches, the dental arches is nothing more than the shape of the jaw bone. Okay? Remember I said I want that shape to be a nice wide curve. I don't want it to be V-shaped. I want it to be a nice wide curve. Now, if you, if, if you take a series of kids and you, you go through this really soft processed foods, thumb sucking, all these things together, bottle feeding, passive use causes poor tongue position. The tongue is the most amazing orthodontic instrument known to man. The tongue will shape and form teeth in different positions that it will completely affect the way the teeth are positioned and the way the jaws grow. So if we can control and put the tongue in the right position so that everything develops properly, you're going to be on a winning trail here. You're going to be moving up the, 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 the road to success. But if we don't, then we end up with a restricted or compromised airway. When that happens, these things occur. Remember I said, if you, if you listen to your child, breathing through their mouth, snoring, or grinding their teeth. A lot of people think grinding their teeth, you know, I, I unfortunately, and I, I wish I could, if I could reach around and kick myself, I would. <laughs> but for so many years, I used to say to parents, hey, don't worry about Billy grinding his teeth, he'll grow out of it. <sighs> I, I just, I didn't know. That's all I'm gonna claim to you, I didn't know. I know now, when I hear grinding teeth, I go, no, that's not appropriate, okay? Mouth breathing, snoring, not appropriate. When these things happen, when you breathe through your mouth, your tonsils swell up, your tonsils swell up, what does that do to the airway? Blocks it off even more. If your tongue position is not correct, then the arches don't go right. All this stuff happens. None of it's good stuff, right? None of it is. What does that then lead to? Sleep disordered breathing problems. And what does that lead to? Remember our first slide, all these symptoms, the dreaded ADD, ADHD. Maybe you have a child yourself. Maybe you're out there this evening listening and one of your children has been diagnosed and is currently being treated for this problem. I, I cannot sit here and tell you I am not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I'm an oral physician that's been in this thing for a long time. I love what I do and I know that nearly half those kids that are being diagnosed do not have that problem. It's a sleep issue, okay? Bedwetting, I'm gonna talk about that in just a moment. Nightmares, drowsiness, you name it. Difficulty in school, ag aggression, anger, all these things are all rolled into the sleep disordering breathing, disorder breathing problems. The beauty of it is, as a Healthy Start dentist, I can fix the issue. Myself and all of my colleagues, we are able to do this. We have the tools. We have, I told you before, we have a dental solution to a medical problem. Now, throughout the world, we have over three and a half million cases that are being treated and have been treated by Dr. Bergerson and this fabulous technique. You may look at the map and say to yourself, well, gee, we see it here, 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 but uh, we're not seeing a whole lot in the United States. That's why we're here tonight. Okay, that's why we're here. We want to we want to get this out to the public and and talk to people about it and get them to understand this is a, a, a solution for some of these problems. Sleep disordered breathing is an issue that needs addressed and needs addressed immediately. Okay, some of the things it can do. I talked about expanding the arch. Remember, I don't want a V. I want a U. A big upside down curve. Okay. Once you do that, then when I, when I have the kids in my office, I'll, I'll tell them to put the little guard in their mouth and I say, okay, close your lips around it. Now I say, I'm gonna come in real close and I want you to breathe through your nose really, really loud. You know, and they breathe in through their nose and they breathe back out and, and I go, that's what I wanna hear every night, all right? We want to encourage nasal breathing, discourage mouth breathing. Nasal, nasal breathing is the way we're built. 
we have this amazing filtration system in our nose and in that turbinates they called up above the nose, right below the sinuses that filter and purify the air. So when you breathe, it's like perfect oxygen for you. The other thing that the appliance uh, uh, progression of a phase of appliance that will do is it will train the tongue, get it in the right position, strengthen it, make sure that it's properly seated when you swallow. And in addition to that, it promotes better speech patterns. So all these things together. I know I work closely with some speech pathology people and I'm, I'm, I'm having their kids uh, wear some of the, the Healthy Start appliances and we're seeing a great improvement in their speech patterns. It will also eliminate bad habits. I'm not even sure I like to use the word eliminate. I like to say replace with better habits so that if they're a thumb sucker, I hand them the little appliance and I go, this is gonna take the place of your thumb. Pop it in there, close your lips around it, breathe through your nose. It will help a thrusting tongue, which will cause the front teeth not to be grow together. All right, it'll eliminate what's called an open bite, where you 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 know you see a child they 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 can't close their lips around because their teeth are wide open in the front, even though their back teeth touch. We can eliminate all these problems. As I said, not only do we treat the issue of this sleep disorder breathing, but we also move in a beautiful pattern and logical progression through an orthodontic kind of movement of teeth to get them in the right spots too. Okay, we advance the lower jaw, the mandible is called the lower jaw, to make sure and correct the relationship between the top and the bottom, to make sure it all fits in there good. We know if that lower jaw is down and out where it's supposed to be, the airway will get bigger. And most of these issues and symptoms with sleep deprivation begin to go away. It also encroaches, in, encourages proper, proper growth, excuse me. I, so many times I'm surprised when I see the kids in the office and I try to guess their age. And I'm always wrong because I always think they're younger than they are because most of them are slightly underdeveloped. Had a little guy today. I said to mom, okay, let's see here. His name was Hampton. I said, Hampton must be six. And he goes, I'm eight. I said, whoa, incredible. But I see that a lot. Um, most of the times when we move through the program, the Healthy Start program, you get all these other good things happening. You know, these are dental terms, intercuspation, blah, blah, blah. What it means is that all the 28 teeth you have are right in the right spot around age 12 or 13. Because we guide them into position properly, it does, in fact, reduce the chance or the need for braces later in life. Okay, now here's a, I'm going to run through a couple of cases quickly for you. This is Michael, wonderful young guy, age nine. Okay, this is easy to see. You guys are already, you're, you're, you're already learning to be an oral physician because I know, I know you're tracing that line for me. Forehead, nose, chin. Chin should be where? Out here. Lower lip is rolled. Not good. The patient even sometimes looks kind of chubby, shall we say. He's not. It's just that his lower jaw is back too far. Okay, we had this young man in the Healthy Start program. About four or five years later, chin was out where it's supposed to be. Jaw to position is beautiful. Michael's looking great. Here's a picture, x-ray picture. Here it was before. We see the lower jaw protruded back. Airways kind of constricted. A bit of a coffee straw type environment. We move it up to 14. Look at that airway now. Spectacular. Okay. Absolutely spectacular. Here he is with a, the, the show how his teeth. A lot of times parents will say to me, well, how can you, you these teeth aren't going to get straight with just these mouth guards. I say, hmm, Dr. Bergson did this for 30, 40 years. Research, patents, everything that goes with it. Take a look. Here he was to start. Here he was to finish. I don't think anybody would be unhappy with that smile. That's a beautiful smile. Really looking good. And there he is there. Look how great he looks. Look how healthy he looks. He's on top of his game, right? Absolutely. Here's an issue where, or here's an, an example rather of 12 months in the Healthy Start program. Teeth are out of position. They're trying to come into the right spots, but see how crowded. Notice, and I think you can pick this up for me. Notice the distance, the, what I would call the width of the arch, here to here, okay? I don't have a ruler. Now let's jump over. Look at this distance, here to here. Wow. Oh my gosh, that's probably four to five millimeters wider, okay? Four to five millimeters in just one year's time. Take a look how the arch, I, I mean, it is curved, I'll give you that, but it's kind of V-shaped. Look how beautiful that curve is. On the bottom, it's even easier to see. Distance from here to here, and then compare here to here. He couldn't fit his tongue in, in his mouth properly because there wasn't enough room. Now his tongue just lays right down in there where it's supposed to. Look how beautiful that curve is. Teeth look terrific. Now, I mentioned earlier that Sleep disorder breathing can be associated with ADD and ADHD. I'm careful.